Welcome, it's Michael Murray with Benzinga, and here with me today is Dr. Stephen Quay, MD, PhD, and President and CEO of Atosa Therapeutics. Dr. Quay, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here, Michael. It's great to have you here. Let's go ahead and kick things off with a quick introduction to the company. Can you give us a quick overview of Atosa and what you do with the company? Sure. Atosa Therapeutics, uh, ATOS on NASDAQ. Uh, is a public company. I am the founder and uh, CEO of the company. We're focused on breast cancer. Uh, we have a patented drug that we're developing in all, really all phases of breast cancer. Understood. And what's your background specifically? How did you come to be CEO of Atosa? So I'm a physician scientist. This is the seventh company I've started. Uh, I got an MD, PhD at the University of Michigan, uh, postdoc at MIT, did a residency at Harvard, and taught at Stanford for about a decade. Uh, when I invented the drug that's used for MRI imaging, uh, gadolinium, uh, went off into business, and, and now this is company number seven. So uh, in founding this company, my real goal is to prevent breast cancer. Happens about 250,000 times a year uh, in the U.S., so about one every minute while we're having this conversation. Understood. Now, tell us about z Undexafin. What makes it novel? It's one of the most exciting things that it sounds like is in your docket. Can you give us a little bit more background on this? So it is the most potent inhibitor of the most common breast cancer. So ER-positive breast cancer is about 80% of all breast cancers. Uh, so that'd be 200,000 out of the 250,000 new cancers every year. Uh, and it inhibits the cancer in three different ways, which is always good because cancers can sometimes try to escape. But when you're hitting it from three different sides, uh, you're doing something very special. Uh, it is a blocker of estrogen on the receptor. So it just interferes with with the receptor uh, being occupied by estrogen. It degrades the receptor, uh, which means you have fewer receptors. Uh, so even, even at the low point of its blood level, it's still doing its thing. And it has a separate uh, pathway, uh, protein kinase C beta in inhibition at higher doses. So no other uh, hormone drug in breast cancer does all three of those, uh, and adoxifen does. Understood. And what's the long-term vision for endoxifen and atosa? What does the road look like ahead of us here? So breast cancer uh, starts in prevention, where you have women at high risk of breast cancer because they have a, a small lesion in their breast called atypical hyperplasia, or they have high density on mammography. Either of those will can lead to uh, carcinoma. So treating that phase for six months is one of the clinical trials we're doing at the, at the Karolinski Institute in Stockholm. Neoadjuvant phase where they've just been diagnosed, but they haven't been treated yet, a six week to maybe three or four month period of time. We're trying to reduce the cancer size in that period to make this, the surgery simpler. And then the adjuvant phase, which is what you give uh, a woman after her surgery uh, to prevent a local recurrence or to prevent a, a new cancer in the other breast. Because once you've had breast cancer in one breast, you're more likely to get it in another. So endoxin is right from the sort of the alpha to the omega of breast cancer. Got it. And you also have three ongoing phase two trials. Can you tell us a little bit about each of them and where they stand currently? Sure. So the, the, uh, the trial to prevent breast cancer is being done in Sweden. It's a six month on drug trial, placebo controlled, 240 women. So 120 will get a placebo, 120 will get the active drug. And we're looking at the density of the breast on mammography being reduced in three months, six months, uh, because that is a surrogate for reduced incidence of cancer. And then we'll look at durability out 18 months. So last woman should start that six-month drug treatment uh, in December this year, meaning by June we should finish dosing. By July we should be reporting uh, very exciting results from that trial. Neoadjuvant trial is being done at the Mayo Clinic and at UCSF uh, in Mayo Clinic in, in premenopausal women only, UCSF in both premenopausal and postmenopausal women. Uh, but again, this is using treating the, uh, the women in that window between their diagnosis and their therapy. Uh, again, about a month, maybe four months, looking for reduction in size of the tumor, reduction in a marker of cell growth called Ki67, reduction in imaging, MRI size of the tumors. Uh, you know, and so, so those are the two trials in the neoadjuvant phase. Got it. Now, Stephen, you guys just presented at the Cancer Fitzgerald Global Healthcare Conference of 2023. Can you talk to us about this presentation? What were you at the conference to share? Well, it was a, it was a, a sort of a new format. I've, you know, I've been doing biotech for a little while here. A new format called a, a fireside chat. Uh, so we basically, like we're doing here, uh, had an interactive conversation. And I think it's much more informative when I talk to uh, all the shareholders, and it was it was a standing room only a presentation. 
uh, they really appreciated the, the informal format. So the key points there were to get across that we have these three major trials in prevention and in neoadjuvant phase. They all have readouts beginning uh, in June or July of next year and going into the end of next year. So this is a great time to get in the stock because we'll be, be presenting data. Uh, so a year from now, you'll, you'll know about the results of these trials. Got it. That's excellent news. And a final question for you as we close out here. We want to understand what kind of impact has AI had on cancer research from your perspective? What impact is it going to have in the next five years? Yeah, so we're actually uh, doing some work in AI uh, from the perspective of thinking about, gosh, if endoxifen does these special things and is so different from other drugs in breast cancer, maybe it has a role in other cancers. Um, there's a very complex analysis that looks at 15,000 different parameters in a cell and then looks at what could affect those 15,000. It's, a, it's a, a mathematical formula that's way beyond the human brain uh, to be able to process. So we've partnered with an AI company to have us look at where endoxin could have roles outside of breast cancer. Uh, and we haven't told you what the outcome is, but we're pretty excited about that program. So AI has got a great future, but it has a great present at Atosa Therapeutics right now. Wonderful. Dr. Stephen Quay, MD, PhD, President and CEO of Atosa Therapeutics. We really want to thank you for joining us here today, sharing more about what Atosa is doing, and we certainly look forward to seeing what happens in the future. Good speaking with you. Thank you.